I do think that you can make the case that like if you like what can I do you know in my life to redu- you know reduce my my risk of getting cancer reduce my risk of dying from cancer reduce my risk of getting alzheimer's disease reduce my risk from getting dementia um, reduce my risk from getting cardiovascular disease reduce my risk for <laughs> type 2 diabetes like the only panacea there is is exercise it's exercise right i mean yep. that 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 is it is it is the case and um unfortunately it's the thing that you have to put the most effort in it's certainly a lot easier to take a supplement, to take a pill. I do think there is an argument that omega-3 is one of the, it's up there, I think. I think getting yourself to a good omega-3 status and defining what that is, is still like being investigated. But um, I do think that's a low-hanging fruit that should not be ignored. But exercise, as you've talked about many of times, is the king, is the king. Um, and and that's, that's the thing that you should focus on. If you I mean, any. I mean, obviously, if you're obese, weight loss, exercise is part of that program. And, yeah. and like, like, I don't think that anyone that's obese should be worrying about all the other things. Like, they need to like lose weight. And any personal trainer and coach, like, probably is going to help you do that. Like, just you eat less. Like, that's calories in, calories out. It like matters to some degree. Like, if you're not eating as much. Yeah, but but as you said, exercise matters not just on the energy balance side, but. Exercise makes you, for example, more sensitive to satiety hormones. So, um, you know, look, I, I, I have kind of a belief here that the the person who is overweight, uh, the person who is obese and who is clearly eating more than they should be, uh, isn't doing that by choice. Maybe, maybe some are, but, but for the most part, I, it's hard for me to imagine there's someone who's listening to this who's obese, who isn't wanting to not be obese and who is otherwise struggling with hunger, right? Um, And I think that, you know, that's one of the challenges is why is it that a person who is not in energy balance is not responding to the normal satiety signals? And I think there's a lot of reasons. On the food science side, we could talk about a whole bunch of reasons why our food has been hijacked, our food is void of nutrients, our food is hyper palatable, it's far too available. Like, there's a whole bunch of reasons. But I think one thing that doesn't get enough attention is this thing, which is an exercising person has a better sense of nutrient requirement. They have a better, their body physiologically is more in tune with their appetitive needs. And so, even though I don't think exercise matters as much as intake purely on the energy balance side. In other words, I think it's more about reducing input than increasing output. Um, A part of that equation is the feedback loop that exercise brings. So yes, exercise just matters. And and, and I also think that, you know, especially in this discussion of cancer and breast cancer as the example you brought up, you know, so many women are so petrified of hormone replacement therapy because of this awful, you know, study the Women's Health Initiative which was completely misinterpreted. But just to use one example of what we spoke about, even the people who ran the study who to this day some of them at least a subset still maintain that conjugated equine estrogen plus MPA, the synthetic progesterone, increase the risk of breast cancer even those people will acknowledge it did not increase breast cancer mortality. So even if you take the most favorable to the WHI, the Women's Health Initiative study reading, the reading is that conjugated equine estrogen plus MPA increased the incidence of breast cancer by 0.1% in absolute risk, but did not increase breast cancer mortality. So here you have basically a non-event that has most people panicked senseless, most women panicked senseless when confronted with taking hormones during the perimenopausal period. And yet at the other end of that spectrum, we have a treatment that has more than a log fold benefit in the other direction, i.e. in reducing risk. Right. And I wish, I wish people would just allow their attention to be allocated proportionate to the size of the impact. I'm 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 100% with you. And and with kind of to kind of even just highlight um or emphasize what you just said, you know, there are studies with women who are doing moderate drinking, which I mean depending on the study you read, it's like I mean for women moderate drinking is like 
it's like you know two, three drinks a, a day or something like it's a lot wow um and like that incre- like that literally like translates to a lifetime risk of breast cancer it's like one in six or something mm. like that where it's pretty significant but you don't hear about women petrified of like drinking you know like two glasses of wine a night um which i mean some people do like it's you know yeah. not it's actually not uncommon um and and so I, it's like again it's one of those things that you were saying where it's like like looking at like what's going to impact my risk more what is going to lower my risk more like what should i focus on like what's like the most important thing i think obesity does you know it, it absolutely impacts breast cancer um same with you know physical activity in the opposite direction has it I means just really enormous benefits. 